So you're thinking of moving to Seattle, Washington. Well, in this video, we are covering three major neighborhoods, Wallingford, West Seattle, and Magnolia. Stick around to the end to find out both the good and the bad of these three neighborhoods. Now, I'm actually standing here on Alki Beach, and this is the most popular spot in West Seattle. I'll probably get sand in my shoes. This is what I do for you guys. <laughs> um, Alki Beach is one of the most popular places here in West Seattle. It's absolutely, uh, man, I remember growing up with our youth group at church, we would always come here and uh, we would have bonfires, we would play volleyball. And if you ever see a trail of sunflower seeds here in Alki Beach, just know that either Russians or Ukrainians were here because that's, that, that's what they typically do. Anyways, let's talk about West Seattle. West Seattle, in fact, right here, you can see the main avenue here. Uh, in West Seattle, we have multiple businesses right off the street here. You have a bicycle shop, one of those fancy ones that you can rent for like four or six people or whatever. You can ride up and down the walkway here. You have, of course, the beach, which we already talked about. You have gorgeous water views for paddle boarding, whatever it is you want to do. And you have Magnolia over there, which is one of the areas that we're covering today. Now, in West Seattle, the main uh, business area is called the West Seattle Junction. And it's known for, well, businesses. And you got a bunch of food there. You have Pagliacci, I believe that's how you say, pizza. You have Seattle Fish Company over there if you want to pick up some fresh fish. You have a fish and chips, what's it called, Spuds, over here, uh, which I'm going there next to grab some food. And you also have a bunch of seagulls over here. Anyways, <laughs> so now why do people live in West Seattle? Well, number one, the views, the places uh, over here, the homes over here, you do have some condos and you actually have some houses as well. I mean, over here for the most basic, not updated home, you're gonna pay well over a million bucks. A lot of these homes uh, have already been torn down and further down the boulevard, you can see condos and apartments uh, right below the Seattle Space Needle over there on the other side. That's where you get most of your people who want to live on the waterfront. That's where all of the residential places are located. From there on out over here, it's mainly just businesses. If you want to live in West Seattle, you're going to get amazing views and you're going to pay a pretty penny for owning the real estate over here. Now, let's talk about one of the downsides of living here. And this downside has been fixed as of 2022. But I got to tell you, for a while, it was causing quite a lot of havoc and chaos over here because the west seattle bridge they found a crack in it and it was shut down for a few years and that really <laughs> really upset the whole flow of not only traffic but of people living here i mean at that time in 20 i believe it was 2020 i had a few homes i was selling in uh, north tacoma and so many people were moving down south because from west seattle because of the bridge closure. When I say so many, I kid you not, on one house, we had seven offers at that time. And I believe it was three or four people were moving from West Seattle because you could not use the bridge. You had to take essentially streets out of West Seattle. And there is a ton of people living here. I should actually look up the number, but a ton of people are living over here. So it really made all the locals and the residents really upset and that it wasn't fixed and as speedily as they wanted to but hey i don't know what you know about building bridges or fixing them i don't know anything so i have no idea how long it takes but all i can say is the people were upset so anyways um this is a gorgeous place to live or if you want to live further out in one of the other areas we're talking about today this is only a short maybe 15 20 minute drive away if you want to spend some nice evenings over here so with that, I'll see you guys in the next neighborhood. We are gonna be covering Magnolia, which is literally just across the water over there. Insert paddle board here with Andre paddle boarding over there. Anyways, see you guys at the next neighborhood. Hey, what do you guys like about living here? They don't wanna talk. That's the Seattle freeze. Nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, yeah, that's a real thing. People are not as, <clears throat> not nice, but not as talkative in Seattle. I don't know if it's like that in other cities, but here that's the case. Even Tacoma, really. If you want friendlier people, more talkative ones, you go out to the suburbs, which is where I live. 
but uh, not even the seagulls want anything to do with you. Anyways, off to Magnolia, finally. <laughs> now for our second stop of the day, I am in Magnolia at one of the most known places here in Magnolia, which is Fisherman's Terminal. Fisherman's Terminal, this is the place where you come if you wanna grab a bite to eat, grab some fresh seafood, and to kind of explore Seattle's fishing scene. As you can see, there's a huge marina behind me. You have some yachts over here. You have some fishing boats over here. And you know, one thing Magnolia is known for is to have actually really nice high-end homes with a lot of views. But Magnolia, one of the downsides is that it's not as well connected to public transportations like other areas of Seattle. Now, for some people that's a downside, for some people that's a plus side, because usually public transportation brings in more homeless activity. Now in Magnolia, you have Magnolia Village. Magnolia Village is a little district. It's, it's a very short street. You could probably run from one corner to the other in a span of maybe two minutes uh, at a decent pace. Magnolia Village has places like pizza, slice box called. It was closed when I was there, but I did head over to Uptown Espresso, right? That's the right way. Uptown Espresso is right across the street from Starbucks and it kicks Starbucks's butt. They have amazing coffee. I got this coffee with, it had like orange zest to it and some chocolate. Oh, I'm probably gonna go there again to get a second cup. <laughs> has some really nice pastries. They even have some games over there that you can sit down at the table and play. Now, like I said, it's right across Starbucks. You have a few other local businesses over there, but really, if you wanna get to a busier part of town, you really have to go to Capitol Hill, Ballard, or any one of the other places. Notable uh, places in Magnolia, besides Fisherman's Terminal, is Discovery Park. Discovery Park spans over 500 acres, 534 to be exact. You have a lighthouse over there, you have a beach, you have trails. You could probably go there and spend one or two days easily if you wanted to walk all the trails. I mean, 534 acres takes a long time to walk through. They also have a visitor center over there where you can pick up a map to kind of plan out your day. And in the visitor center, I thought it was pretty cool, they also have a little room for your kids where you can just bring them inside. Maybe it's raining heavily. You can bring them inside. They can draw, they can play. I think it's a nice touch that they have that. So anyways, so with that, we conclude our short stop here in Magnolia. And now we are off to our last stop of the day, which is Gasworks Park in Wallingford. And now we are in Wallingford. Now, I hope my uh, microphone holds up well because it is windy today. We're right in Gasworks Park, which was an old gasification plant back in the early 1900s. And uh, it's right on the water. You have gorgeous views of the city of Seattle. I don't know if you get much better views anywhere else besides Gasworks Parks. I mean, there are other parks in the area um, that I've shared before, but this is one of the most notable scenes here in Seattle when it comes to parks. Now, you also have a, uh, the playground right behind me, and it's a very big playground. I mean, it really starts from right about here. I don't know, was that probably 150 feet? Um, really big playground. You're right by the water. I never tried fishing here. Probably should. Wonder if it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> You're right by the water. You see some of the houseboats over there. People actually live in those. I've been on them before. I had a listing appointment uh, on one of them. So uh, it's a, uh, yeah, interesting way to live. I don't know if I would ever do that. Most real estate around Wallingford, you're gonna see a mix between old and new, right? My client, Ron, uh, who came from YouTube, shout out to you, Ron, again. Uh, he bought a place in Wallingford just uh, recently for, I believe it was 770,000. It was a town home. Um, and that's what you can kind of expect over here in Wallingford. You have some great places to eat, like Pam's Kitchen for Caribbean food. You have Tutabella Pizzeria, uh, which is absolutely, I think it's one of the most gorgeous places in Wallingford. You have the pizzeria, and inside the pizzeria, you also have like a cafe and a bar as well. One of the best places I personally think in Wallingford. So definitely a must visit when you guys are here in town. And you also in Wallingford, you have the Wallingford Playfield as well with the playground. Uh, plenty of parks around Seattle, guys. I don't know about other cities, 
but I'm very biased by I think Seattle is one of the coolest places to live. Now, Wallingford, it does have a lot of public transportation. You know, like we were talking about in Magnolia, you really don't have a lot of homeless activity. In Wallingford, you have a considerable amount more of homeless activity. Uh, I'm just being real with you guys, you know, it really, if you're looking to move here, you need to know these things. And hey, if you don't care about it, it's totally fine. You know, just like any other city, if you're moving out to the suburbs, you're really not gonna, uh, you know, see a whole lot of that. But if you're within the city, there's definitely places um, that uh, you can live in to avoid any kind of homeless activity and of course, less crime. Um, and then there's places that are a lot busier. And again, the plus side of living in Wallingford is that you have a lot of places that you can just walk to. You know, Magnolia, which we covered right before this, it really doesn't have that. You really need a car to get around over there. Whereas here, you can get a scooter, a bike, something along that nature. Most people still have cars and you park along the street. But uh, anyways, that's what Wallingford has to offer. Some of the things, a lot more than that, but we're just showcasing the highlights for you guys. So with that, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video, guys. We covered three diverse areas here in Seattle. We covered Wallingford, West Seattle, and Magnolia. So you pick, you know, there's so much more that Seattle has to offer. I wanted to mention those three specific areas just so you get a diverse point of view between three different spots. So with that, thank you again so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and uh, my number is down below. I'm an agent, so if you're moving over here to the area, please shoot me a call or set up a Zoom call and I'd be happy to help you make that smooth move over to Seattle.